Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Monday, Charlie Demersian did release an interesting vulnerability that affects all recent Intel CPUs that do provide remote manageability features. The earliest affected one is the Nehalem platform, which was released in 2008, but even the most recent Kaby Lake processors may be affected. The problem here is the Intel Active Management Technology, also known as Intel Small Business Technology or Intel Standard Manageability to technology. All of uh, these three technologies are vulnerable and attacks can lead to an elevation of privileges. The impact very much depends on whether or not these features are configured to be reachable across the network. So typically you find this feature in systems being deployed in businesses. You're less likely going to see it in a home system, but then again, there is no clear distinction. What's a business system, what's a home system. So I would still double check in a home environment whether or not you have this feature enabled. If it's only enabled for local access, then what you have is approach escalation vulnerability. An attacker that has access to the system can escalate privileges to become an administrator. Now, more dangerous if you have it exposed on the network, which is particularly common for businesses that would like to have the kind of remote manageability that this feature offers, then your system is exposed on port 16,992 through 16,995. Essentially, this feature will intercept all network traffic on uh, these ports. The traffic will not be passed to the CPU. Instead, it will be processed by these management features. It's also available over Wi-Fi. Now, Intel did publish an advisory regarding this vulnerability. There is no exploit as far as I can tell and not a lot of detail about how to exploit it, but Intel did release a tool that you can use to scan your systems to see if the feature is supported and enabled. Intel does recommend that you go to whoever built your system for firmware updates. And if that's not available, then Intel has some advice in how to turn off these features to limit the exposure. So as a minimum, block those ports at the firewall. I'm not aware of anything else that's listening there. And these are actually IANA assigned ports. So nothing else should be listening on uh, these ports. And uh, then download Intel's tool to scan your environment for any systems that have it enabled, update the BIOS or turn off the feature. Laptops that leave your network and maybe connected to not so trustworthy networks are of course at the highest risk here and you probably should just disable this feature because once a system leaves your network there is really not much point in having uh, this feature exposed on the network interface. And well, uh, while I think it's a little bit generous to call this vulnerability uh, approach escalation of vulnerability, the next vulnerability is clearly that and it's a vulnerability in Check Rootkit. If you're not familiar with Check Rootkit, Check Rootkit is a script that you can run on Unix systems in order to find rootkits that someone may have installed on your system. In order to do its work, a Check Rootkit has to run as root, but uh, due to some insecure files it's opening, it's possible to actually use the fact that Check Rootkit is running as root to become a root. So a security tool is yet again used against the defender. An exploit is available for this particular vulnerability. So an attacker would run the exploit and then the next time check rootkit is being run, then the attacker is becoming root. 
An update is available. The vulnerable version is 0 0.49. The latest and the fixed version is 0 0.50. And then we got yet more escape sequence vulnerabilities in Linux terminals. Now, not really clear yet how exploitable all of this is. Some of them at least lead to a memory corruption, which could possibly be exploited for remote code execution. But what's even more dangerous for some of these escape sequence vulnerabilities is that it may allow an attacker to actually sneak characters into the input buffer of the terminal. So they will then appear on the terminal as if the user typed it, which of course can also be used for code execution. Screen and XFCE4 terminal are two of the more popular terminals uh, that I saw here that uh, may be vulnerable. Some of these vulnerabilities may actually be in the underlying libraries, so it may affect various other terminals that are using these libraries. Well, that's it for today. So get on patching and thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.